I was recently visiting the Discord server for Ziggurus, who's a one of my favorite YouTubers. He does some really, really good tutorials on how to make classic arcade games from scratch. Uh, you definitely should check out his channel if you haven't. Uh, but one of the users on his Discord server had posted a question about how to have an automatic door that you can open and close via a script. So I thought that would be a good subject for a tutorial. And so I've created this little sample scene here where I have a couple of walls and I have this sliding door object in the middle. And a sliding door has a top door and a bottom door. Uh, if I was to move this top door up, that gives you an idea of how uh, the doors will operate. The bottom ones will, of course, scroll down. So there you go. Uh, we're going to control those through a script, and we're going to use an animation, actually, to open and close the doors. Let's do, first of all, create a script, and that's going to hold our animator component. So we'll say C-sharp script, and I'm going to call this automatic doors. And I'll select our little game object here and as soon as unity finishes compiling i'm going to drag that script onto there uh, we're going to go into that script and let me zoom in so you can see what i'm doing we're going to in our await method initialize the animator so we're going to say animator equals get components so we're basically caching this um, so that we can just access it later on in the script so animator and then I will put my cursor over here, control period, create field. So we have an animator. We're going to get that animator and cache it in this field here. Uh, and I'm also going to disable it. So in this case, this is a continuous door. So we only want it to be always going or not going at all. Um, we're going to add an update method where we're going to check for input and we're going to look for get key down key code dot space so if we hit the space key then we want to play the animation we want to toggle the animation so let's add a boolean here well now we can actually check and see whether that thing's enabled so what we can do is add a function here and I'm going to call it toggle animation again I'll hit control period create method come in here hit shift delete to delete that whole line and I'm going to say if animator dot enabled then we want to say animator dot enabled equals false but I also want to set the top and bottom to their original positions so I'm actually going to um, the children of this object are transforms. So if we go back into Unity, I want to show you this. So we're on this component here. And underneath this component are two objects, two game objects, and they both have transforms. Uh, so Unity makes a really cool way to iterate through your children. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our child doors and I'm going to set their position. So I'm going to say transform door equals get uh, actually transform dot get child child zero so this is the first one and I know that his um, position we're going to want to set it to negative 0 0.5 so I'm going to get his current position so door dot position and then I'm going to say position dot y equals negative 0 0.5 and then I'm going to sign that back so I'm going to say door dot position equals position and then I'm going to do the same thing for the second one so I'll say door equals transform dot get child one this is the bottom door uh, and I will say position equals door dot position and then I'll say door uh, position dot y equals 0 0.5. So that's the positive direction. And I'll sign it back. All right. So it's basically telling me that I should be caching. It wants me to introduce a variable for that position. Um, it's just so I'm not 
referencing that transform more than once. I'm going to undo that because it doesn't really matter. So all of this, I'm going to actually extract this. I'm going to say Control Shift R, extract method, and I'm going to call this reset doors. Um, I basically just want to reset the doors to their start position when I stop playing. So when I start again, um, they'll start from their closed position and they will open. And then I'll just return. Otherwise, we're just going to say animator.enabled equal true. So now hitting space should turn that animator on and off. Let's go back into Unity. And obviously, in order for this to work, we actually need an animator. So let me close this. I'm going to select our sliding doors up here. Um, hit Control S to save my scene. And I'm going to add a component, and it will be an animator. And then I'm going to come in here and create a folder. I usually like to put all my animations into a folder. I'm going to right click there and I'll say right click create scroll down until we see animator controller and I'm going to call this automatic doors all right and then we will select our sliding doors and we will drag that into the animator controller field now we need to create an animation so let's go up to window animation animation and it open this floating window. I don't want to dock it there. I actually want to dock it there. So now if we come in here and say create, because we were already in the animations folder, it's going to put the animation there. And I'm going to call this continuous automatic doors. All right. And I'm going to hit record and I'm going to take this top guy here and I'm just going to expand this transform and I'm going to move it a little bit on the Y direction. So it creates a keyframe here and then I'll edit that and just set it back to 0 0.5. Okay. Uh, so this one I am going to um, nudge him a little bit. It creates another keyframe and we will reset that to negative 0.5. And then I'm going to go out to about the one second mark. And I'm going to set this to negative 1.5. And I'm going to pick the top one and set this to 1.5. And you can see it's added a new keyframe with those values. I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll down so I can expand this and I'm going to select this node here at the top one so I get them all. Hit control C to copy. Position this cursor here at the two second mark and control V to paste. And if I was to stop recording and hit play, watch those doors. It's a looping animation and it is just opening and closing. Which is exactly what we want. All right, so I will stop that. So now we have on our sliding doors an, an automatic, automatic door script and an automatic doors animation controller, and we created this animation here. So if we were to hit play now, our script has gone out and gotten this animator controller and disabled it. So you see this here is disabled. I'm going to hit space. And look at that, it gets enabled and it starts playing. So that's a way you can have some continuous doors that automatically continue to open and close continuously. So next I'm going to show you how you can have what I would call momentary doors where you can toggle them open and closed. Uh, so we're going to create some different animations for that. We're going to have an animator with two clips. One's going to be an open door clip and the other is going to be a closed door clip. And we're going to have state transitions between them. Okay, so before we proceed on doing the momentary doors, I want to create some prefabs. So we're going to go in our assets folder. I'm going to slide this down so we just see them as a list instead of thumbnails. I'm going to right click, create folder, and call it prefabs. And I'm going to drag our sliding doors into there. 
and then I'm going to rename it to be continuous sliding doors. And then I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to break the prefab by saying prefab unpack completely. So this object here is no longer associated with this prefab. I'm going to remove the automatic doors script from it. And I'm going to create a new prefab and just call it sliding doors. Um, we got this automatic doors animator controller. Um, if we go into our animations folder, you can see automatic doors. Um, and it has an, a continuous automatic doors animation that it plays. Uh, we're going to create a new animator controller. So I'm going to right click, create animator controller, and I'm going to call this sliding doors. And then selecting this guy, instead of automatic doors, we're going to drag in sliding doors. And I'm going to double click on that to open up our animator window here. Give me some more room to work with. Uh, there's an initial entry state. We want to create another empty state and call it idle. And that's our default state. Now let's create a couple of animations here. So um, our animation, let me make sure we're in our animations folder. We are. So I will say create, and we're going to call this open sliding doors. And we'll pick this guy, expand that out, record, pick the top guy, give him a nudge on the Y, pick the bottom guy, give him a nudge on the Y. So that's just so it creates the keyframes. And we'll set this to negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. So that's our starting position. So we're starting from the closed position and we want to open the door. So let's go out to one and we will record. We're recording. We will say negative 1.5 and 1.5. Stop recording. Now, if we go back into our project and look at this open sliding doors in the inspector, you can see on this animation loop time is currently checked. We want to uncheck that. We do not want this animation to loop. We just want it to open the door and then stop. Um, in our transition from idle to open doors, we're going to under the parameters tab here, click plus. We're going to add a trigger and we're going to call this open doors and right click on idle make transition and then click on open sliding doors. We're going to click on that transition and uncheck has exit time so that it will happen immediately when the trigger is fired. And then for conditions, we click this plus button and it defaults to open doors because it's the only trigger that we've got. Now we want to automatically transition back to idle after the animation plays. So that's good to go. Now it's very important. If we look at this idle, there's this right defaults. Um, what this will do is it will reset whatever it is that we're animating back to its default values after the animation completes. In the case of open doors, we don't want that to happen. We want the doors to stay open. So we want to uncheck right defaults. Very important. All right, let's create another animation. So under animation here, I'm just going to drop this down and say create new clip. And we're going to call this one closed doors. And we'll record, give this guy a nudge, give this guy a nudge. And now we're going to start out at negative 1.5 and 1.5. So we're going to start open, go out to the one second mark. And while still recording, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then we will stop recording. Go back into our project, select closed doors, and uncheck loop time. I probably should rename this close sliding doors. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to drag this into our animator. We're going to make a transition from idle 
to here. We need to add another trigger. We're going to call this closed doors. Select our transition. Uncheck has exit time. Select closed doors. And then we'll add a transition back to idle. So I think we're good as far as the animator controller animations go. Let's apply these changes to our prefab. And let's make sure we'll make sure that is enabled. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, let's create a script. So go back into assets and I'm actually going to create a new folder for scripts. Um, I figure you might as well see how I like to organize things. So I like to put things in folders that describe what they are. So I got my prefabs, my scenes, my animations, and my scripts. So we'll go in there, let Unity recompile since we moved the script. And we'll create a new script. And I'm going to call this sliding doors. Select our sliding doors object, let Unity recompile again. And we will drag sliding door script onto our game object and double click to open up in the editor. All right. So I'm going to copy from our automatic doors. Um, I want to copy our awake and our variable. And I probably don't need this, but I'm just going to leave it there, but set it to true just to make sure that animator is enabled. Now in this one, we're going to look for the O and C buttons. Um, o to open the door, C to close the door. So I'll say if input dot get key down, key code dot O, tab to auto complete. Then I want to say animator dot set trigger, open doors. Um, it's giving me this little yellow squiggly because it's saying that a string based property lookup is inefficient. Now for a little tutorial like this, this doesn't matter a lick, but I want you to see how you can use a cached property. So I'm going to right click, actually, I'm just going to click on there and then Rider gives me this little light bulb, use cached property index. It's going to automatically create this read only integer open doors and it's going to calculate the hash from the string open doors and assign it to that variable. Now it's very important that that is spelled exactly the same as our parameter up here. Okay. So it is in that case. So we should be good. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to return after doing that because we know we're done if we click the O key. And then I will say if input dot get key down, key code dot C, I want get key down, not get key code. Then we're going to do animator dot set trigger closed doors. And once again, we will let Rider generate a cache property index closed doors. And that should be all we need for our script. I like to remove any unnecessary usings, keep my code as uncluttered as possible. And by the way, the reason I put this return statement here, I could have just done else if, and that would be perfectly fine. I typically like to do what we call um, early exit um, short circuit evaluation. So I, I like to, if, if I know that we've completed everything we're going to do in this function and we don't need to go any farther to just go ahead and return. And that could even get rid of the need for an if, if this, did, if this didn't have to be an if, if I just had some code that would execute if this wasn't the case, instead of putting it in an else, it would just be out here unindented. And it just helps to reduce the indentation level in your code. It's not a big deal. It's just a coding convention I typically like to follow. All right, so let's expand this out just so we can see our game view a little bit better. We've got our sliding doors animator controller. We've got our sliding door script. We removed the automatic door script. So I think we should be good to go to test this. I'm going to hit control S to save our scene and that little asterisk goes away. 
hit play. There's no animation happening. You can see that it is in the idle state. I'm going to hit O. And you see it played the open doors. I'm going to hit C. And it played the closed doors. So there you go. We've got um, two different types of sliding doors. We have continuous sliding doors that continually open and close. And we've got um, momentary ones where you have to just open them and they'll stay open and then close them and they'll stay closed. So if you wanted this to, instead of being sliding doors, you can make this um, a rotating door. Uh, and all you would do is rotate it on the correct axis. Uh, I would probably have to set the pivot point for my object to, instead of being the center, to be the end here so it would rotate around that position. But the animation would work the same. It's just instead of animating it on the position, you'd be animating the rotation. And there are, of course, many ways that you can trigger those doors opening and closing. Uh, for example, let's go up here and we'll go to our sliding doors and let's add a sphere collider or maybe just a circle collider since this is 2D. And I'm gonna switch to our scene view and expand this out here a little bit. And let's look at our collider here and we will just increase this radius to something like that. And we're gonna make that a trigger. And I'm going to create uh, an empty game object and I'm actually gonna delete that and I'm gonna create a, uh, let's see, a capsule. And we'll just call this player. And we're gonna add a capsule collider 2D. And I'm going to add a rigid body 2D. I'm gonna pick that. And we want it to be kinematic. And we're gonna set its capsule collider to be is trigger. All right. And where is this guy? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move him outside of that collision radius. Let's go back into our sliding door script and we're going to add on trigger inner 2D. And what we're gonna do here is we're just going to say um, I'm going to move this code. Well, I was thinking I could move this out into a function, but I'm just going to call it. We'll just copy that here. And then we'll have on trigger exit 2D and we'll call closed doors. So now if we go back out into Unity and we select our player here and let's just drag that out here a little bit and we'll hit play. I'm going to grab our player and I'm just going to move him. You see the door is open. He goes through and the doors close. Come back, open, close. Open, close. It's interesting it didn't close all the way. But that just shows you that there's any number of ways you can trigger the animations to open and close these doors in your code. Well, I hope you found that useful. And if you did, it would really mean a lot to me if you could help me support my channel by clicking that like and subscribe button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm to get my content in front of as many people as possible. And if you have any questions about anything I covered in this video or any suggestions about things you'd like to see covered, Leave a comment below and I always read and respond to all my comments. So thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.